hey, <clears throat> hey, uh, hey, Caleb, guess what? 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 Uh, um, dude, you're never gonna believe what, what's going on. Guess what, dude? Guess what? What? I'm t uh, well, well, I uh, I did something. I did something important. Oh yeah. Yeah, I started recording. Or yeah, we're broadcasting right now. Well, you know what that means. I sure do, buddy. Well, I'm ready. Just go. Well, I'm ready. Well, I'm clean as a whistle, and I'm bright as the sun. I've got my head on a swivel, and I'm A number one. Dun, 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 dun. I'll read the paper, then get on with the fun. Holy shit, my whole existence is a sick, cruel pun. Dun, dun, dun. So why not sit back, relax, shut down your brain? Stare at your screen while Matt and Caleb explain all things great and small, the wonders of creation. And even though you may die long, at least you're a nation, you're a nation, you're a nation plus life. Plus live, y'all. That's right. Welcome. We're episode three of Urination Plus Live. And, well, we've got a great show for you guys today. Caleb, um, actually, uh, before we get started, um, Caleb. Yes, Matt? What the hell are you wearing right now? What are you doing? Well, Matt, um, you know, the, the first two shows, I sort of made a big stink about the fact that I was uh, made the co-host instead of the host, and, you know, I, I decided not to do that simply yeah, for this you reason. Did. But, so check this out. I was reading the USA Today, great paper, and there was an article about these guys who go to Wall Street, and they do this thing called Occupy Wall Street, okay? And basically... Yeah, I, they're in every paper ever. Right. But USA Today, that's, that's the only one I saw them in. I, uh, I saw what these guys are all about is... They go and they and they and they they dress and they paint their faces and they sit outside Wall Street as a way to go, hey, we're being treated unfairly and this is how we define that to the public. And I just I fell in love with the idea because like these people, you know, they don't seem to put a lot of thought into why they do what they do. And you know me, neither do I. If I can avoid putting thought in anything, I'm for it. So anyway, uh, this is my way. My, my, my way That's of, true. Of, yeah, this is my way of, of, of protesting, hey, you know what? I don't think it's fair that I'm co-host instead of host. But that being said, you know, he, he, here's my, you know, here I am. Take that. How do you like that? So what the hell? I don't understand the point of this at all. You just, you just dressed no, all in agree. black and put on a, a bandana? Yeah, well, I, I noticed these protesters all dress in black black, which I think is less about having a uniform and, and more about just it's a crazy mm -hmm. coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, they wear black. I've seen it. So anyway, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's fine. The people will see me. I, I, I am occupying the internet is what I'm doing, which is way better than occupying things in person because unlike those people, I can shower. Uh, I can sort of do it at my own convenience. As long as I wear this and put the old... And you have a you have a nine to five job, am I correct in that? So you can just sort of sure. do this whatever. Wow. You know, yeah, right, right. Well unlike these people, I, I'm unwilling to make the sacrifices of not contributing to our economy or our country or our reality, just showing up and going, Hey, I represent that people have been treated unfair. Um, you know. So this is it, you know, and it you know on with the show. Okay, well, um, let's, uh, whatever, let's get to the first news segment, uh, or the, the news segment, which is the news segment. Uh, Caleb, uh, I think you had a uh, little story you wanted to talk about. Um, oh, I yeah, know. well, well there, there's, been some, uh, there's been some big news in the last few days. There was a, uh, you know, we, we lost a... Uh, a, a, uh, a human being who, who, unlike the Occupy Wall Street people, contributed to society, uh, never wore yeah. black, uh, never painted his face, you know. Okay. Um, 
But yeah. Well, I think I know who you're talking about, so let's just get right to it. Sure. His name was Ray Bradbury, and he died at the age of 91, uh, peacefully in his sleep. Uh, that's what I read. Um, so I just, you know, I think we should throw a shout out to the greatest, one of the great sci-fi writers of all time. Sure, um, yeah, Ray Bradbury, for those that don't know, not me, because I'm very aware of his work, he was a comic book artist, right? Not even close, no, uh, oh, no not even he, close to being right. The guy that wrote Blondie and Dagwood. No, no he didn't bl- write Blondie and, okay, no, he wrote uh, Fahrenheit 451, Oh, you something know what? Something Wicked This Way Comes, some... Uh, you know what, okay... I didn't read Fahrenheit 451, but I think I remember reading Fahrenheit 452. Uh oh, now we're in trouble. I think it was a title. Maybe I saw. I, I don't think that. No, there's no way that that is an actual novel that you read. That's. I don't. I, what, what, what was, what's the plot of Fahrenheit 452? Um. Well, from what I remember, and I'm spitballing here, but I, I remember it having to do with people using books to kill each other, like beat each other to death with. And it was all about, hey, you know, we should, we should burn these books and get rid of them because, hey, people are killing people with these books. People are beating, the, beating each other to the hell with Bibles literally. And then I think it was no. like, hey, burning books is a good thing because it, it, the, it really does save lives. There is no way that that book exists, nor is could that that was not the plot was about censorship in the first one, and the whole society fell apart at the end of the, the first oh, novel. No. I do not believe that you read that book. Wait, wait, uh, Ray Bradbury, we're talking about, right? Yes, not, Ray Bradbury. Not to be confused with Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, correct? He absolutely correct. I and, agree. And not 100%. to be and not to be confused with Philip K. Dickberry, uh, this neighbor not we had person. growing. Yeah, this guy, this neighbor we had growing up, who was a Vietnam vet. Real weird dude. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You had a you had a neighbor named Philip K. Dickberry. Yeah, we used to make fun of him because of his name. Dick Dickberry. No, 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 Philip. I mean, who the fuck names him? Oh. Philip? Yeah, yeah we'd it's be a like, stupid, yeah. stupid name. You're right. So anyway, we gave him a hard time. We used to set all firecrackers outside <laughs> of his window just to spook him because I guess he had been in Vietnam or Cambodia. I don't remember. Oh God. But, but uh, I don't know if wow. he wrote science fiction. Um, I'm like, pretty sure that he did not write science fiction, no. Right, but I bet he. But I bet he he read four, uh, Fahrenheit four fifty two. Uh oh, here we go. Not a book, in. like I said, not a book. Impossible. I'm about that. Yes, that there is that no way that that's a book. It, and the man who who wrote Fahrenheit forty one just died. He's one of the greats, and I'm I just don't I don't want to, you know, make and false he, statements about him. Sure, but he died. He died. How did he die? Peacefully in his sleep is what they say. Yeah, what they say, what the media says. Oh, the come media. on. Do you know that occupies shit? Yeah, no. Yeah. Here's the thing. You can, anytime a celebrity dies, you can assume what you hear of how they died is the opposite of the truth. This man was a science fiction writer, which first off what? means, yeah, people don't write science fiction who, who they, 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 people who write science fiction, they didn't have normal lives like you and I. They came here from other places. We have normal lives? Yeah, 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 we do more or less. But, but my, my point is this guy, this Ray Bradbury, if he died at the age of 91, peacefully in his sleep, where do you think he went as soon as his soul left his body? Uh, I, I don't know. Not, um, I'm not really the most religious person in the world, so I, I don't know. Yeah, but he's a sci-fi writer, so listen, sci-fi writers have done a lot with their knowledge. I mean, we've had religions created from it, so this guy had to believe before he died, he probably said, you know what, I can't wait to die, because I'm going to be reincarnated as a, uh, you know, a Martian on a, on a, in a place that we haven't even discovered yet, 
And then I'm going to have to teach these other Martians that, hey, we've got to burn these books, these Martian books, because the last thing I want, I saw the human race use books to destroy each other, and, and I don't want to see it happen in this Martian race. So he probably just went on to hit his okay. next that's life not, that's, doing that. That's based on a philosophy. No. That's based on a philosophy that you just made up. That is based on a book that he never wrote. Okay? It, it, never mind. You know, I think that we let's just move on because we have a very special we have something very special to show you guys uh, or to get to. We here at Urination Plus Live for the first time we have a guest. We have a guest on the show. How oh yeah, that? yeah, no, that, that's great. No, and this is uh, this is this is huge for us uh, because you know I always felt like even as co-host I I didn't get enough time, but Matt in his gratitude and graciousness as host, has agreed to let me uh, interview the guest. So I'm very excited about that. Um, it's a segment, it's a new segment. All right, uh, well, let's, let's, there you go. Hey, there you go, that way I can read. Uh, this segment's called Caleb Asks an Educated Pirate Questions Developed by Prowse. Now, uh, Matt, do you mind, because uh, I'm assuming he's, he's at your place, he's not here. Um, do you mind going going to get him so I can conduct my yeah. interview? Absolutely. I'll I'll be right back. I'll get him. It's a everything's gonna be this is gonna be great. I'm so excited. He's been in the next room and yeah. he's uh, he's he's ready to go. Okay. In the meantime, uh, I want to again remind the fans if you get a chance, check out Fahrenheit 452. <laughs> It'll change the way you think about. Not a book. About books and people in general, I, you know, I I, ha I have a feeling uh, once this Occupy the Internet comes comes on, will uh, once it catches on, people will all sort of, oh hey, uh, are you coming. matey? Are you ready for the interview? Yeah, <laughs> my okay, my well, dad's uh, having technical listen, difficulties. Yeah, th th hey, thanks for uh, no, hey, th thanks for joining us. We appreciate having you as a guest. Uh, I know you're... A Not a kid. problem, ye matey. <laughs> okay, well, we'll uh, so we're going to get right to it, if that's okay with you. And again, a segment we call uh, uh, Caleb, Caleb Asks an Educated Pirate. Uh, uh, questions from Prowse. So here we go. All right, so uh, Educated Pirate, tell me what is your favorite virtue? My favorite virtue is the quest for knowledge that exists in all human beings. And also, my hook hand. Okay, all right. And I'll show it to you after the show. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Would you show it to Matt when he comes back from the bathroom? Uh, okay, great. Well, so, tell me... Sure. Uh, Matt's a good chap, by the way. Greatest host I ever met. Yeah, is he the one that gave you that koozie, Educated Pirate? <laughs> yes, he said we are so close that I can drink from his cup anytime. Oh, wow. Why is my what? hat so wacky now? <laughs> I'd say that's a good virtue to have. All right, let's move Arr. along. Let's move along since it's going so well. Okay, tell me, Educated Pirate, what are your favorite qualities in a man? What are your favorite One qualities? foot, one hand. Yeah, that's all it takes, huh? Before for you to be Narr. one over. Okay. Well, well that and a sort sense of, of a sense of awe at the universe as well. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. That's important. It's good that an educated pirate has that sense of awe uh, in the universe. Well, so that leads to our next question. What's your favorite qualities in a woman? Two hands, two feet, okay. and a mind, a mind as exquisite as her body. <laughs> wow, okay, well put, so sure, there you have it. Um, educated Pirate, our audience is dying to know, what do you consider your chief characteristic? Well... It may be obvious from looking at this whole scallywag, but my, my most important... Well, I don't even remember what you asked now. But 
<laughs> What's your what? What is your chief characteristic other than short-term memory? It loss? would have to be my chief characteristic. Would have to be my knack for adventure. Wait, your what? My knack for adventure. Oh, your knack for adventure is your, okay. I can see that. Yarn. <laughs> because this is this is quite the adventure. This interview. So that's great. That's great. Uh, that's my... <laughs> There's another one for you. Um, my hat's on. having technical problems. You'll have to forgive me. That's your chief characteristic, by the way, despite what you said, is your technical problem. Um, well, well, tell me, moving on, what, what would you... What, you what, people usually don't notice. I'm sure. They're too busy focused on the iPad. Um, is it well, hot in me, here? Speaking of, pe speaking of people, uh, tell me, educated pirate, what do you appreciate most in your friends? Well, I appreciate good old mates. People who will go down with the ship, like Queequeg or the captain himself, Ahab. <laughs> I definitely dismiss folk like Ishmael who live to tell the tale. My tale will never be told as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, no, that, that yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, appreciating your friends Is for their going down with the ship. By the way, uh, you know, I don't mean to point out educated pirate, but but I don't know if you consider oh. me a friend, but I am more than anyone going down with the ship right now because I'm a part of this. Um, Are you? Okay. Here's your next question. I think this one may be obvious, but I don't know. Maybe you'll surprise the audience. What is your main fault? My main fault would have to be my Think about it. Take your time. lack of understanding in a universe that runs on both Newtonian physics and quantum mechanics simultaneously. How is such a thing possible? And I beat myself up over a, a good big stein of ale every night trying to imagine the world as it is. Wow! Wow! See, what? I thought you would have gone with my my eye patch and hat that changes shape and size, but no, that was a uh, that's a quantum mechanics problem. <laughs> sure. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. Now, uh, again, another question that may have an obvious answer, but you may surprise us. Educated pirate, what is your favorite occupation? Believe it or not. Pirate. Ing software off the internet is my favorite thing to do. Well, well, that's great. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know if you know this from an educated pirate, but we are actually online right now. We are on the internet. Oh, I'm going to download it for free later. Don't ye worry. <laughs> well, it's on, it's on YouTube, so you can watch. But yes, by all means, we encourage the downloading of our. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I won't uh, be seeing it. <laughs> no, not with both eyes, anyway. Um, okay, well, uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll move on, and, and here we're getting into the the final three. Please continue. Ye. Okay, educated pirate, what's what's your idea? What do you consider happiness? What's your idea of happiness? What makes you happy? To curl up at night with a nice fair maiden and just eat a nice Klondike bar while watching Nova on PBS with the wonderful Neil deGrasse Tyson. Arr, yeah. so I haven't seen that. Is that a good show? I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar. <laughs> Yar. No. It's highly rated. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Uh, well, good. I'm, I'm glad. It's nice to know that uh, despite being a pirate, you still try to uh, keep an open mind and, and you're interested in other things. Um, okay, well, you know, to, to, to look at the other side of the coin, the doubloon, if you will, what is your idea of misery? 
what what makes you miserable? What, what what is just what is your what is misery to you? Well, when I hear in the paper of these Somali so-called pirates operating in the seas, I say no. These are men who would never go down like a Queequeg or an Ahabba. Sure, they, your friends. Yeah, your friends my, that you appreciate from earlier. Somali pirates are a bunch of whis, wimps like a bunch of wandering Ishmaels with bazookas. <laughs> bazookas? Now, now, just real That's, quick, if I could steer in that direction, are. what's your favorite type of fa firepower to use? I mean, they, they use bazookas. Like, how do you compete with that? Being an educated pirate, obviously, from a flintlock. <laughs> all flintlock, all the time. No matter what, it takes thirty-two minutes to reload one round. You must be precise in your aim. Sure. Is, do you find you that see this? <laughs> this happened because, because I don't know if you've noticed my eye patch. Well, it comes but this is the nose. result of a, of a flintlock gone astray. That you didn't wait 32 minutes for? A flintlock that Please you tried? Please continue. It. Okay. Um, okay, so we're on to our final Yard. question. <laughs> and this is a big one. Educated pirate. Oh, if you, <laughs> if you weren't yourself, if not yourself, who would you be? If not yourself, who else would you be if you could choose? I would enjoy being truly in my heart of hearts the host of an internet show where I'm the ruler and the captain. I steer the vessel and I get in all the good singers. Arr, arr. Well, I, you know what, speaking of, that's a great answer, by the way, because I've often had the same dream. I'm curious, educated pirate, what if you were But you offered... seem like an Ishmael. You could never handle the pressure. You would, you would float on Queequeg's coffin, you sissy boy. Well, but, but what if, what if you, were, you had that position, but you were co-host? Are you comfortable being co-captain of an internet show? I would put the flintlock rifle in my gullet and paint the seas red with crimson goo. But after only after 32 minutes, because that's how long it takes. For the I flintlock. would do it the moment I was offered the position, you fool. I have to run now. The seas are calling. My okay, fair well lady. This has been fun for all of you. Well, I, I want to give a big thanks to the educated pirate. Uh, well, hey, when you're backstage, will you tell Matt that we're, we're ready to wrap up the show? And uh, I'll tell him for ye. I'll tell him as I walk the plank off your broadcast. In your parents' attic? This is my best friend Matt's parents' attic. Thank ye very much. Occupy the internet. Oh, boy. Oh, man. That's how the stupid show go, you idiot. Did you guys high five? Oh, are we off? <laughs>